So we just got the GT500 dropped off and well, we are getting it. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here. And yes, in today's video, we're we'll talking about selling some of my vehicles. We're just gonna dive straight into it. But before we get into that, as always, if you're gonna save time and money, the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And with that being said, let's dive right in. So if you don't already know, one of the vehicles that I currently own is a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. And while I have owned this vehicle for about a year at this point and 4,000 miles, and although I said in previous videos that I will never get rid of this vehicle, there are some things that have come up, and so now this is one of the vehicles that is potentially on the chopping block. Yes, I am getting rid of my bright pink dream machine, <laughs> potentially. Now, another vehicle that I currently own is this GT500 with a track pack. I just bought it. I only have like 100 miles on the car. And well, the reason for that is because of this stuff. When it comes to the GT500 track pack, I'm going to do everything that I can to keep the car, but there is potential that if another car comes up with my order allocation too soon, then I will have to sell the car. And I'll kind of talk about that a little bit later in this video, but this car is most likely going to stay, but there's a chance that I'll have to get rid of it if things happen too quickly, if that makes sense. Now, the third car that I currently own is this Land Rover Defender, which is the most reliable vehicle on the planet. Never caused us a single issue. Just bought this one as well. I think it's got like four, 500 miles on it. At this point, I've been driving it a little bit just to make sure that <laughs> nothing else breaks on it. And when it comes to the Land Rover Defender, I have no plans on getting rid of it. I know that a lot of people want me to get rid of this because of the initial reliability issues, but I think that that's just gonna be a quirk that I dealt with right after delivery. And I think after that, it's probably gonna be flawless. And so my plan is to keep this for probably about four years and what is it, 50? I think it's like 50,000 miles, whatever the warranty is. <laughs> as soon as the warranty's gone on this thing, then uh, yeah, it's probably going to go. But while this still has a factory warranty on it, I, I wanna keep it because I absolutely love how this drives and it's just, it's just a great vehicle, frankly, when, it, when it's working. Now, the last vehicle that I own is not this Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. It's actually my Gen 3 Ford Raptor, which is not here right now because the wife is driving it because, well, we're not putting her in the Defender quite yet, but uh, just pretend like this is a bright green Raptor. And uh, I've had that for the longest. I bought that at the end of 2021, and I've got like over 10,000 miles on that truck. And when it comes to the Gen 3 Raptor, that is another vehicle that is on the chopping block. <laughs> I know. Um, I'll explain everything like as the video progresses, but all you need to know is that as of right now, it looks like the only vehicle that'll be staying in the garage is the Defender if things happen in the way that I think they're gonna happen. But before we move forward with this video, I obviously have to set up the thumbnail for the video. And so I will uh, take you guys along. Apparently a lot of you like to sing me play, um, I guess uh, with the cars, but anyways, look at that. I haven't driven this for like over a week, started right up also. It looks like it needs gas, dang it. Um, and well, let's see if the uh, power steering works because that was the issue. Oh, look at this, it works. We are, we are fully like, we are fully ready to go. And before you guys try to lecture me on how dirty the Jeep is, I actually washed it earlier this week and then I drove all the way up to Layton and it got dirty yet again. And so I will be washing it again, but I am gonna be using it. I'm gonna be using it for an off-road comparison. I always forget how loud this is. Like, you guys gotta remember, I like I have like just over 4,000 miles on this, which actually John Jenks has put like 500 miles on it. So I've only driven this like 4,000 miles total. And so like, I'm used to reviewing V6 Wranglers, you know, 2 Turbo Wranglers and you know, the 4 by Wrangler. And so like, whenever I go, get into this and start it up, I expect to hear like the V6 or the 2 Turbo and then the V8 pops on and I'm it, like, I own it and I'm still <laughs> surprised every time. I know that sounds stupid, but like, yeah, it's just, that's just what it is. Well, I've got the Defender parked on the street right now. We've got the Wrangler right here. The reason I have this set up this way is because I don't wanna pull out the GT500 until the Raptor comes back because I know that as soon as I pull this thing down the driveway, I'm not gonna be able to get it back up the driveway. Okay, well, the uh, Raptor's officially here and so now we can, I guess, get this whole thumbnail set up and take the GT500 out of the garage. And I, like, seriously, this is straight. It's straight ice. The GT500 has track tires. Kind of nervous. Well, first things first. And the door's closed. <laughs> this car is so ridiculously loud, but 
I absolutely, I love it. I love this car so much. I just realized we're pretty much out of gas for this one too, so I guess we're gonna have to fill up this one and the Defender on our trek to uh, get this car dropped off. I didn't mention that, but that's also part of this video is we're getting this car dropped off. Don't ask me how long this took to set up, I don't really want to talk about it, but I think it looks okay. The lighting's obviously pretty crappy for the shot, but I'll have to figure it out because uh, this is the only time I can take this thumbnail before the GT500 goes, and the Tacoma just chilling there. So I guess you imagine you drive by and you'd be like, bright, 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 mega bright. Okay, well that thumbnail was kind of a disaster, but let's quickly dive into each of the vehicles and my reason for selling each of them and what I am planning on replacing them with if I do sell them. So let's start things off with the Wrangler. You guys can see the pink background, and yes, I'm propping myself up on the Raptor here. Now, the reason I'm thinking about selling the Wrangler it just comes down to the fact that I got a Bronco Raptor allocation. Um, I will most likely be putting my order in next month, at the end of next month, and so if everything goes to plan, I will be getting a Bronco Raptor, and as much as I love this V8-powered Wrangler, and it's like super cool, and I think this is going to be super collectible in the future, especially finished in Tuscadero pink, it's just, it, it's not my cup of tea, I've discovered. Like, I thought I was a Jeep person, but I've realized that if I want to do slow off-roading, I would rather have something like the Defender, which is super luxurious and super comfortable. Not as capable as Wrangler, but super comfortable. And if I want to do high-speed off-roading, well, the Wrangler can't do it. The Raptor can, though. And so the Bronco Raptor, in my opinion, gives me the best of both worlds where I can do Wrangler-type stuff. Obviously, it's not quite as capable as a Wrangler because it doesn't have a solid front axle, but, you know, it can do 99% of what a Wrangler can do. It's like that 1% of situations that the Bronco Raptor would probably struggle and the Wrangler would be able to do. I wouldn't want to do those situations anyways because, like, I'm married. I have a kid. I don't want to wreck a vehicle and get myself injured. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of the reason why I'm thinking about it uh, is... I, I ended up finally getting a Bronco Raptor allocation. And this leads directly into the F-150 Raptor. Now I've had this for quite some time in 10,000 miles and I've absolutely loved it, but the Bronco Raptor is similar enough to the F-150 Raptor that I feel like I'd have two vehicles that are way too similar. And so it, that kind of pushes me to want to get rid of this. Now, what I'm thinking about from a content perspective is sell the Wrangler for the Bronco Raptor and then do a comparison video with F-150 Raptor versus Bronco Raptor. Let me know if you'd rather see that or if you'd rather see Wrangler versus Bronco Raptor. So like, depending on what you guys wanna see, well, I guess determine which vehicle I trade for the <laughs> Bronco Raptor, but I'm thinking it's gonna be Wrangler for Bronco Raptor because I feel like more people are gonna to wanna to see F-150 Raptor versus Bronco Raptor. But regardless, although this is cooler looking than the Bronco Raptor in my personal opinion and is way more comfortable than the Bronco Raptor, it's just so similar that I'd rather just get a different vehicle that gives me a different driving experience if I'm gonna have this much money put into a vehicle. and so. You know, the vehicles that I'm thinking about replacing the Raptor with is obviously Raptor R, but I think that's a pipe dream. I don't think I'll be able to get one. The other one that you guys are absolutely going to hate is the Mercedes G Wagon. I absolutely love the vehicle and it's not for the reasons that a lot of other people love it for obviously a lot of people love it because of the status symbol part of it i love it because it's super luxurious like it's super comfortable like its ride quality is just as good as the f-150 raptors in my personal opinion after driving a few and then it's also really capable off-road and it has its own unique driving experience that like none of the other vehicles have and so i, I think that it would be a great daily driver for me frankly and i would also do like an off-road build with it and i think that i'd be like one of the first influencers that actually takes that vehicle off road and shows that like you can take a g-wagon off-road like i feel you know i'm not trying to take too much credit for this but i feel like i helped out with the whole raptor world with me jumping my raptor a million times the same thing with the ram t-rex like i showed people that you can take these trucks off-road you can beat the crap out of them and they'll still be fine and so i kind of want to do the same thing with the g-wagon because nobody's done it before but at the same time it's super expensive and uh, well part of my language it's super douchey as well because it's it's a g-wagon but I, I like it for the off-road capability and the luxury 
I don't care about the status symbol part of it. Frankly, if I could take off the Mercedes badges and make it not look like a G-Wagon and have it drive like a G-Wagon, then I would still buy it if that makes sense. And then quickly on the GT500, I want to try to keep this forever if I can financially. I just don't know if that's going to be feasible because I am on the list for the C8 Z06. And here's the deal. As much as I love the GT500 and as cool as it is, if my spot in line gets picked and I can put an order in and then the car gets delivered and I, you know, have to choose between this and the Z06, I'm going to pick the Z06. I know that this, like, is probably going to be a more reliable car, but... Yeah, I just, I've always wanted a mid-engine supercar type thing. And so, yeah, if that thing pops up, then I will for sure be taking that. And that's the only reason why I'd get rid of the GT500. But if my allocation takes long enough to come in, then I'll probably be able to make it work where I can keep both of them. But let's just see what happens. Last important thing is remember the satin finish here on the Wrangler, the paint protection film that I got from Steck? Just, just remember that because... Uh, it's going to be very important at the uh, closing of today's video. So we just got the GT500 dropped off and, well, we are getting it wrapped. So we are doing the same satin paint protection film from Steck that we did on the Jeep. So this is going to be satin white. I think it's going to look absolutely fantastic. We're going to be keeping all of the carbon fiber elements gloss. So you'll have the contrast between the satin and the gloss. And guess who's back? Hey, hey. Doug is back. We, like... The, everything is everything is aligned. The universe is in order again. Doug's wrapping my car, so like, what more could you ask for? I'll see you guys.